Hey YouTube, Jim coming in with a video. I'm um, doing a response video for vintage oddball cards. Um, Rick uh, is the guy's name. He's having a, a contest. Uh, he wants he wants people to talk about uh, miscut and off-centered cards, and he went, wanted to know whether people buy them or if you would buy them. And he wanted to see some examples of cards that you may have in your collection. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, um, Rick, he's uh, got a great channel, Vintage Oddball Cards. <clears throat> I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, great. He's got an awesome collection. Guy's really knowledgeable. Shows some really cool stuff. So, um, recommend everyone to go check him out. <clears throat> and so, um, as far as... Um, my collection's concerned. Um, I do not have any graded uh, miscut or um, off-centered cards. Um, that's not to say that I wouldn't buy any graded ones, especially, you know, <clears throat> when you get into the vintage cards, especially some of the iconic cards, they're just so expensive. Um, you know, sometimes you can get a nice example um, of, say, an Aaron, Hank Aaron rookie card or... <clears throat> you know, you name it, uh, Willie Mays, Rookie, or even just some of the more expensive cards, Mantles. You know, you can get a nice example of um, the card <clears throat> with a qualifier, and you can get it at a better price. You know, I've seen several guys who have purchased 1952 Mickey Mantles, and, um, you know, they have no grade at all, or even have been, um, you know, altered or whatever, and they just have the authentic... Um, designation and it's still you know be a beautiful looking card um, but because it's you know possibly altered or just designated authentic or doesn't have a grade <clears throat> you know you you can buy it at a better price and you know a card like that is most people can't afford to buy you know in a high grade or even a mid grade and, you know, even the ones that are just authentic are very expensive, but at least they, they're uh, within reach for, peop for some people. So um, I, I would definitely, you know, if I came across a card that I really wanted that was a very expensive card, if it had a qualifier like that and it looked good, I'd, I'd be more than willing to purchase it. Um, I do have some raw cards, though, that I want to show. Um, I'm going to start off with this 1960 uh, Duke Snyder. This one is definitely off center. You can see um, there's supposed to be a white border here along the bottom, which you just really just doesn't have it. And also um, very tight, not much of a border here across the side either. <clears throat> um, you know, I've just this, this is just a card I picked up uh, years ago, and. Um, you know, obviously it's a, a great set, 1960 tops. Duke Snyder uh, was a great player, and um, it doesn't matter to me if it's off center. It's just uh, for my personal collection. I'm never gonna worry about having it graded or anything like that, so um, that's fine. Um, next up, I have a 1967 Hank Aaron. You can see this card is way off center as well. Um, this edge here particularly and along the bottom um, you know sometimes I have a hard time seeing you know sometimes I see cards that have uh, off-center qualifiers and they don't really look that bad off-center to me and then um, other times I see cards that don't have qualifiers that you know they, they do look off-center but um you know again another card I've had for years um, other than the centering of it it's in pretty good condition and obviously it's Hank Aaron, um, great, great player. Um, the back on this doesn't look too, too bad. I mean, it does look off, you know, off center, but especially along the bottom. But again, um, don't really care. It's just uh, for my collection. It's a great card as far as I'm concerned. This next one, um, Reggie Jackson, 1969 rookie card. Uh, this card is famous for uh, having centering issues, and this one here is is no different. Uh, you can see this edge isn't really there at all. 
and the bottom is off quite a bit too. Um, again, another card, uh, it's getting up there in price, especially if you buy it in a good grade. Um, I, I got this card years ago, bought it. It was very inexpensive at the time that I bought it and I've had it for a long time. And um, again, other than the centering issue of it, it it's in pretty nice condition. Um, the back looks really nice. Um, so that's those three. I'm more than happy to, to have those in my collection. Now, as far as miscut cards, I've got some, <laughs> some great examples here. Um, <clears throat> these are just cards that I had come across over the years and I just, um, just because they were so badly miscut, I just hung on to them. They're not really worth anything, but they're just cool to, to see. Um, so this one here is, um, a 1967, I'm sorry, 1966. <laughs> now that's miscut. <clears throat> Paul Schall. Um, so badly that you can see the other card here. The top is missing there. Um, the back of it, you know, you see the other card. Can't even barely read the number there. Um, just really, really miscut. I'm not really sure what Topps was thinking back then. Um, here's another 66, Al Dow Dowling. Um, same, same situation. You see the back. Somebody was nice enough to write the number on the top there. 384, I believe it says. Yeah, 384. That's the card number because you couldn't read it. <clears throat> and then I've got another one, same situation. Just amazing that they even had such bad... I don't know how they ever were able to cut these cards like this, but... Uh, that, these are pretty classic miscut cards. Here's a 66, 67. Ron Swoboda, not quite as pronounced, but pretty, pretty badly miscut anyway. There's the back. And they were doing it all the way up. This one's a 77. Uh, Paul Russell, which is very badly miscut as well. Um, again, these cards are not, they have no value at all, really. And I just just think it's amazing that they're so badly miscut. <clears throat> I mean, they're the exact same size as any other cards, but um, when they cut the sheets, they just really messed up. So I just hung on to them because, because of that reason. <clears throat> now, this, these next two cards, um, they seem to be miscut a little bit, but they are just odd cards that I came across when I was looking for for these other ones and I just wanted to show these as well. Now this is a 19, uh, 1970. Um, it seems to be miscut for sure, especially along this edge. But the real oddity on this card is the, it almost looks like they put a double image. Um, not even really sure what the heck they did, but haven't seen too many like this. And um, it's definitely miscut, but um, just just an odd, an odd card. It's uh, you know there was a lot of psychedelics back in the, <laughs> back in 1970. So I guess that was kind of going with the theme there. And um, I actually have another one as well. <clears throat> Gene Michael. Just looks like they, I don't know what the heck they did with the photo, but again it is uh, miscut as well. So, um, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, just, here's the back. Just, um, that's what I got. Uh, at least the most um, extreme examples, let's put it that way. So, anyway, um, I want to thank Rick for the contest. It's pretty cool. I've been enjoying watching some of the other videos that I've seen. Uh, go check out his channel. And that's it. Bye for now.